Hello everyone, Krydax here, and welcome back to our Satisfactory 1.0 playthrough. I've done a few things since the last episode, mostly stuff that isn't all that interesting. What I went ahead and did is I set up high-speed connectors right behind the computers. And that's because computers use circuit boards, quick wire, and rubber, and high-speed connectors use quick wire, circuit boards, and silica. So all I had to do was put silica on the row that we weren't using for computers and the quick wire and circuit boards get reused on the same line. So it was really easy to set up high speed connectors here. And I haven't put those on the bus yet, but that's available right there if and when we need to. And instead they're kind of going down here and into our storage container plus dimensional depot. So we have a lot of high-speed connectors already. And then, the reason I even set up high-speed connectors is I needed some other stuff. So we brought over coal, sulfur, copper sheets, and heavy oil residue. And you may or may not know what all that put together equals. But uh, to start out, we used the coal... Wait a second, what am I doing? No, that's motors. Uh, we used the coal and sulfur and an assembler right here and that gets us our black powder and then that black powder mixes with the heavy oil residue to make smokeless powder and then that mixes with our copper sheets to make rifle ammo which we already had a big stockpile of but i hadn't automated and the reason i wanted to automate this is because then you mix that with high speed connectors to get homing rifle ammo that's right we've got homing rifle ammo now so that's pretty awesome it actually shows up as more damage uh, then the rifle ammo, if you look at this, it shows us two little damage bars, and this shows up as three. So that's pretty awesome, and the clips are 20 bullets per clip. Though, it does have a weird spread, so I... We might actually end up being less accurate sometimes with it. I, I haven't used it a ton yet, but that's automated. I have it slooped right now, but we can... We can de-sloop it once the... Stockpile's built up. Um... I'm mainly just trying to get it filled up faster. I mean, we're already at an absurd amount of ammo. That'll last me a long time. So that's one thing I did. And then the other thing I did is I got water brought over from the pond over there in a Mark II pipe. So this is 600 water available to go. And that's because we're going to be automating aluminum and aluminum needs water. So that's what we're doing in this episode is getting aluminum going and then we'll be able to do our mark 5 belts so that's pretty awesome what is that patterns oh that's new okay i bought i bought some more um whatchamacallits and i guess that shows up here cool how do you clear them Pattern removal. There we go. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be setting up aluminum, and that is a bit of a project. So we're going to need to kind of think it out a bit here. Hey, Cyborg Spike, how's it going? You're welcome for the blueprint videos. Your wife hates me. Why does she hate me? What, is, what does your wife have against me? Is it because I'm keeping you addicted to Satisfactory? Um... Yeah, so aluminum is a lot of steps. So it starts with a bauxite, and that gets used in the alumina solution, and that's where we need the water. And then that produces some some silica, which we will use later in this process. So that uses silica, and then we have alumina solution, and alumina solution, it's one-to-one -one, by the way, the bauxite to solution. And then we pipe that over to aluminum scrap, and we have to add coal into that step and we get some water back. And so we're going to have to use that water as a priority and we'll get over, we'll go through how to do that. Um, and then it's two to three. So two bauxite means three aluminum scrap. And then aluminum scrap gets combined with quartz again. Now you'll notice the numbers aren't right. So the quartz that we ended up making with 12 alumina solution was five. And so now we're using four and we need five quartz. So that means, or silica. So that means we need 15 silica and only five of it is produced internally. So we're gonna need to bring in 10 silica from outside for three sets of this. 
So then we have aluminum ingots and then the aluminum ingots we can either just process directly into casings or mix with some copper to make all clad aluminum sheets. So there's a lot of steps to this. Um, I'm not entirely certain how big of a build it's gonna be. It should fit in here, I'm confident. We're not gonna need an absurd amount of it. So problem one is we don't have bauxite up here yet. So we're gonna need to bring, we're gonna need to bring bauxite over. It's over there on the train station. And so we're gonna have to bring that over to our bus. Probably we'll come up the side of the building here because I don't need it on the first floor or anything. I could put it on the first floor. I haven't used, there's a few belts I haven't used yet, but I wanna, I wanna keep those available for more iron and copper. So we're gonna bring over the bauxite. And we'll just put it above this limestone here. What's up, CCTV? <laughs> Your sleep schedule's ruined. You stayed up till five. Oh my god, that's pretty bad. I won't lie, that's that's pretty rough. Um, that is certainly a ruined sleep schedule if I've ever heard of one. All right. Uh, let's see. Will that work? Okay. Is that too long? No, that works. Perfect. Alright, then we're gonna run this along. And I don't think we'll need to do anything special. I'm just gonna have it go up above the others here. Or maybe, maybe from here, I'll go over to the side right on top of that one. And then we'll go onto a wall mount and then we'll go up. And then we've got the water and the bauxite in the same spot. So we can do a wall mount maybe up here. And then I can do a lift. That seems good. Something like that. I'll have to arrange the lift spacing properly, but for now that's good. Alright. Bauxite. Bauxite. Uh, also, I should think about numbers. So if the train... Right now we're only getting 480 a minute maximum because that's the input on the train side, but the train itself... We timed it, and it was just over three minutes. Uh, and it's, what is it, 3,200 per three minutes. So I could get a theoretical, like, 1,050 bauxite a minute from, from that train. So I don't think that will support a full Mark VI belt when I get to Mark III miners overclocked. But that's tomorrow's problem. And by tomorrow, I mean a long time from now. Okay, so then this lift is not high enough. We want to bring it up to probably this level. And then what I'd like to do is get the, I want the pipe, we probably want the pipe first. So we'll do pipe with bauxite on top. Mm. Yeah, we'll do that. Mark two belt over here. And this is one of those times where I really don't like how there's no support here, so I often will add one. Wait, what? Shouldn't that line up exactly? What the heck? It should. It's not. Weird. Alright, we'll just do it that way. Then it's exactly straight. Okay. So there's bauxite and water, and we start out 
with some refineries. So we're going to get that nestled up against this build. And we'll do our refineries X3 blueprint. Which, somewhere around here, should be good. Think like that. No, that's the output. I did this again. Keep doing this. I feel like refineries look backwards to me. Yeah, there we go. The input is is on the tall end. I feel like that throws me for a loop. Okay, we'll give that a little extra spacing. Wait, but why am I confusing myself? The input is on the back left, so I don't care which side the input's on. I need it to be facing towards me. That's how we do this. What's up, Darkwan? You're working with the blueprints right now? Awesome. Yeah, I've been enjoying making that series. It's turned out pretty good. So this is what we're going to be doing. Um, three of them feels like plenty. I can always shard it if I need to. Um, so honestly, I'm just going to copy that. And uh, that's 360. So the water, what's 180? That's 540. So yeah, we're already using almost all of the water that we have available. Now, we'll talk in a minute about how to prioritize water. Another option is you can always just package the water and sink it. Uh, that's not the option I'm going to go with, but I just want to mention it. It is technically an option. Um, you really didn't want to deal with it. You could just spin some plastic and get rid of it. So we're going to do this. Bring in the bauxite, bring in the water. I guess we need to paste our other blueprint. I'm also going to have to get rid of this. This is my heavy oil residue sinking, uh, basically, which keeps plastic and rubber running because I don't have a, another way to sink heavy oil residue. This is the simplest way, because it just turns a fluid into a solid, so. I could put that somewhere else. I could extend our little plastic and rubber factory down here and do the heavy oil residue sinking there. The problem is the prioritizing is not easy when it has to come up to over here. Basically, the way you prioritize outputs on fluids is you have a vertical junction, and then you have the lower priority come out and up and then over. And so basically, when the pressure is lower, it won't be going up that path. It'll just be going flat. And then when the pressure is higher and you have more, then it'll climb up the other path and go to other things. So we would need it to climb up a path and then go to these. Otherwise, it's not going to be doing what we want. Debugging a fuel plant that isn't working properly. That is always annoying. Speaking of a fuel plant, you reminded me, we need to go... I think I'm going to get this built first, but we need to go finish our turbo fuel plant. We only built like 40% of it. Unfortunately. Okay, let me get the other belt. Oh, don't I need... I think I need more um, encased beams for this. This belt blueprint is nuts. Yeah, it needs 460 uh, encased industrial beams. So, that's going to take a minute. Or we'll have enough. Technically slightly more than a minute, because one minute gives me 120. Um, all right, so what are we doing next? We've got the Illumina solution, and then that goes into more refineries with coal this time, and we get the water back. And we get it back 
Well, we're using it at 240 a minute, so that's double what this is doing. So really, I only need one and a half refineries. I could I could maybe get by with just one refinery. Um, that could be a good place to sloop things as well, to get a lot of free aluminum. Um, interesting. Let me, let me think about that. That's, I, I haven't wanted to build in needing sloops yet, but this feels like a place with high enough rates that that doesn't seem crazy. Uh, I mean, look at that. It's just an absurd amount of aluminum scrap we get, and then it helps compensate some of the water too. Um, so basically we'd only be running two of these. Right. 240, yeah. And then that saves us on bauxite and coal and water. And it saves us even more on water because not only are we only using half of the water, but we're getting back twice as much. For the, well... No, sorry, that, there's only one of those two things happening. You can think about it, one or the other. Um, so we're getting back 240 when we're only using 360. Jeez. So we're almost getting back the amount of water we're using? Is that right? 120. Yeah, basically two of the... Here, let me just overclock it so that the numbers are the same. Um, yeah, we're using 360 water, make this, and then aluminum scrap, we need a foundry to make a bunch of ingots, and that's 90 a minute per foundry by default, so this can supply a lot of foundries. How to import the blueprint SP, SBP file. I actually do not know exactly. I assume you download the two files and put them into your blueprint category and then they just show up when you start your game. I've never actually imported blueprints, so I can't tell you more than that. But I assume it's just you copy the files into the folder. And they're in app data, local, factory game. And then somewhere in there, it's like in save games, blueprints. I don't know, it's, uh, you can just Google where Blueprint's located and you'll find what you need. Okay, so here is our Blueprint for all the belts. I will plop down. And then we have to connect things up. Quick 24 belts, you know, NBD. So one thing, I don't know. One thing I'm excited about is having the Mark V belt launchers. We are very close to that. That's going to let us traverse the world very quickly. Especially when coupled with that packaged biofuel. Okay, so then we need to get water over to the back, which is here. So this is actually going to be quite easy. Um, let me go ahead and get pipeline in the right spot. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Uh, we need pipeline mark two. Actually, do we? I guess we might not. Um, but we'll upgrade all that just in case we do. So there's the water. 
I believe I've got the head lift we need for this. I, I have a pump right uh, down there. I guess it'll tell us. Oh god, these can do 50 meters? I didn't know that these ones could do 50. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, we definitely have enough then. <laughs> uh, we definitely have enough. All right, so then... The way that we do priority input... We're actually gonna have to mess with this. Um, hmm... Well, we'll deal with it in a second. First, we need the... What you want to call it? The bauxite. So we'll do that first. Uh, bauxite... Should be doing it. There we go. Have I looked at anything for fluid dynamics? Yeah, a little bit. I did watch a video on it the other day. I think I understand enough to at least do priority in and out, more or less. So in this case, to do priority, basically the way that we do it is we have one of them. At least I think this is how we do it. So what I need to do is put an unpowered pump like this and we don't plug it in. So what that does is it resets the head lift that this pipe has available to zero. And then what I do is connected to this, which this is where it's, I guess, a little complicated. Um, I don't know how big this guy is. I need an industrial fluid buffer. Do they fit on one? No, they're way bigger. I might be able to just raise up a regular one. This might be too close. Um, but basically I need a fluid buffer. Yeah, that's way too close. Um, and then we'll talk about how it works here in a moment. Maybe I'll just stack it on this foundation. I'll go up six meters. That should be plenty. And then we hook these up. I wish I hadn't unlocked the clean pipelines, because now you have to click through it. It's actually quite annoying. Um, so yeah, so we've got that. Now, this will not fill up at all. Check that out. It doesn't fill up at all from the, the fluid down here, because we already talked about the head lift was reset when we did the unpowered pump. So this will fill up, however, from the pressure of the output uh, the output water from the aluminum scrap one. So when I hook this up, oh wait, already that's this one. Uh, when I hook this one up, it should it should work. Also, I'm just gonna put this here now so this matches up with the with all the same numbers, right? So 360 alumina solution is the total when these are not sharded. And then they're using 540 water, but this is going to be producing 360 of the 540. Uh, CCTV, when you said off topic, but you wish there was a way on Steam to delete all of a game's files. It is, yeah, I've always actually felt the same way. It's weird that, like, all the app data stuff doesn't go away when you um, delete it. But, yeah, so we're going to have silica here, which is not used in this step, so we'll carry it forwards. And then we're going to have... I need this to face the other way. Um, and then we're gonna have the Illumina solution here. I needed one shard. 
Shift clicking that is not working. Weird. And we're clearly not going to have the rate that we need on that aluminum scrap for a while, but that's okay. Uh, so we're going to need to bring in coal as an additional input, and then the alumina solution should be able to just come over. So let's get that looking nice here. What's up, Tobias? Welcome, welcome. Just finished overtime at the factory so you can babysit your make-believe factory. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's how we do it here. That's how we do it. All right, we'll use our lining up the thing trick. I finally figured it out. Uh, so the video is not out yet, but I did the video on coal power plants and I was dinking around trying to figure out how the heck do we get pipeline junctions when they're vertical? Because they line up fine when they're sideways, but when they're vertical, they don't seem to want to snap to even other junctions. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. In this case, it looks like it actually worked. Um, but half the time that doesn't work. But splitters, just belt splitters, weirdly enough, they line up. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, so we'll noodle. Do these need to be marked too? I'm not actually uh, sure. Yeah, they do, because it's going to be 360. Um, I'll upgrade that one just for looks. <laughs> Centered, you wish there was a way to not show hours played. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> um, all right, so then what we're going to do is I'm going to put another power pole in the same, I think in the same spot. And then we'll get that hooked up. And now that should have its alumina. Now I need to bring coal over, and I'm gonna bring that above the silica here. So we're gonna need another stackable pole. And we'll just line this up. Walk around all this chaos. And then we need to grab coal, which is right here. We'll grab it from that splitter. And then I like to bring it up over my head as soon as possible. Can't remember which one works. That one. Then we come forward to there. And then that can go sideways. All right, this is working pretty well. And then this is where we need to do our trick, where we come out, three, go up, splitter, splitter. I've gotten pretty good at all this. And then connect down to there. And that should be good. Yep, coal's going in. Hey, aluminum scrap, baby. I, th I think two summer sloops is okay here. I uh, We're just getting... This is such a good spot for slooping, right? For two summer sloops, I'm doubling my entire aluminum production. That feels worth it. Because all of my alumina passes through this stage, and I only need one building to be summer slooped. So I think, for me, that's the definition of heckin' worth it. So we're gonna leave it. Those will be my first two permanently installed sloops. Um, and now we have to deal with the water. So let's talk about this. So the water, I should be able to just link this up and it'll just hashtag work. The problem being, actually I don't think there will be a problem. There should always be room for the output water in this buffer because none of that water can come into this buffer. So basically this buffer exists for the output water from that guy. And then as this buffer fills up higher, it'll increase the pressure to the point where that water, which has no pressure left, won't flow. So I'm pretty sure this just hashtag works. I guess we'll find out uh, if our aluminum horrifically stops, but I think 
This is the way to do it. So yeah, that water will come out. The aluminum scrap. Um, for just a moment, I'm just gonna awesome sync it so we can see if this is working. Um, I need power. And we'll get some free points while we're at it, but yeah, I just wanna make sure that this is working, like the water's emptying out. And it's going up into here. Yeah, see? Now, I might have built this too high up. I might build it down one. Um, because it won't fill up as much. Logistics? No. Organization. Fluid buff. We'll have a little bit of a better buffer if I do it, I think, this way. I guess the thing I need to do, hold on. Let's um let's slow down here. Let's turn that off. Let's flush buffer and this pipe segment real quick. And let's just make sure none gets in here. With w coming from this direction. Yeah, that pipe is completely full. And the buffer's getting... Oh, it does get a tiny bit in there. Though that's possible that was just from sloshing. Sloshing is a thing. No, it seems like this fills up a bit. Whoa. Whoa there. Way more full than I expected it to get. I guess even if head lift is reset to zero, it still has like a meter left or something, or the sloshing creates some form of pressure. But the point is, it's not filling up very much, right? Like, it's not like it's filling up to 200 or something. So we should see that this guy will have a lot more pressure to fill up that buffer. So there will always be room for the output of this water. So this should fill up more now, which it is, which is good. And that means the water back here should be getting used less. So overall that should work. Um, it's possible that it's not gonna work. But it, it, it should. <laughs> um, oh, and the silica is going to back up too. I need the silica to get awesome sunk. What's up, gaming strudel? How goes it? Oh, that's not the right belt. Wait, what? Heck? Oh, my silica is coming out the wrong way. I just realized that. That's kind of funny. Um, I didn't... Yeah. I didn't consider that. Uh, I guess we'll just do a silly and we'll have it come up and over. Let's see. How does this work? You go like forward. One, two. And then one, two. Is that a right angle? I can't remember. Yeah, something like that. Alright. Are my temples flowing with blood? Uh, I guess so. The effigies and the windows and the walls, they're all doing great. I don't know what any of that means, but it's all great. Um, all right, just give me power. I don't care where from. Okay, so now that's not a thing. That's gonna back up. So now things should keep running, if all is well. Because this buffer should empty before that water gets let in. So everything should be working. I'm 
gonna go ahead and reset them so we can check on the 100% production graph. Or it's not a graph, but that number. That should be a hundred. No, no, sorry, it's not gonna be a hundred because this, it's not even gonna be close to a hundred um, until we have faster belts. It's gonna be limited to this rate. So maybe I underclock this for now to get the targeted production rate of 240. That should run constantly. Um, we shall find out. Oh my goodness, these things are so annoying. I need like a. I need to get one of those footrest things that goes under your desk. So you have a place to put your feet. Okay. Seems to be running. And the water seems to have a place to go. Alright. Yeah. So I think I think that's how you do priority input. Basically, is you you fluid valve, unpowered, or pump, you you could use a valve as well to slow down the input rate, but then you run into problems if things back up. Um, so this is more likely, because then this version basically always gives you room for out whatever you're outputting over there. So that's why this version is better in some ways. Um, another way you could do it, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, what if you used this as... No, I was gonna say you could bring this down a level, put the pump, and then bring it up, but then it wouldn't come up. You almost need like a second. Like I wonder if, <laughs> it's a little clipping, but you know, if you were to do something like that, this would essentially, if you did enough of that, it could provide a little bit of a buffer, but I don't know if it's enough units to be consistent anyway all right let's uh let's finish our aluminum build here so get rid of these sinks i don't actually want to sink my products uh what stage are we at we're at the aluminum scrap stage so the scrap getting scrappy with it so now we go into the foundry build so foundries blueprint and Hmm. We're coming from there and from there. And we need quartz to be priority in but which there is no such thing as a priority merger, so we're going to have to figure out what we want to do with that. Um Yeah, what do we want to do with that? So... Exactly... Oh, so we have less quartz this time. Normally we would have a third of the quartz we need, but in this case we only have one-sixth of the quartz we need because we're doubling our aluminum scrap that comes from the alumina solution. So because of that, this is only one sixth of our necessary quartz, which means we need a lot more. Now I'm trying to think of easy ways to do it. One way is a bunch of mergers. Um, what am I trying to guarantee? I'm just trying to guarantee that this quartz gets used up. So it could just be in a two-part merger. It doesn't need to be anything fancier than that. 
as long as it gets to be at least half of the input, which is what this will this will do, then we're fine, right? Because it's only one sixth of the actual numbers. So if I just merger right here and have another, I have my, my main source of silica coming along, then we'll be totally fine. Because the main source will produce most of what we need, and then it'll take turns with the one sixth. And if you're taking turns with one sixth, when you're producing five sixths, you're gonna run out of turns for the one sixth, which means it's getting used up. So that's fine. As long as you know your ratio, normally it would be one third if we weren't summer slooping it. Uh, but in this case, it's one sixth because we are summer slooping it. And our quartz is right, or not quartz, silica. You know, is this one of the weird cases where I should go over? I don't normally go over, but I went over with the pipe there. And I think, given I've got refineries here, we're still well underneath the ceiling. What's up, B. Jonas? How goes it? Oh, I think I'm fine just zooping my way up here. And yeah, that's totally fine with me. Funnily enough, I also have silica right there. I guess I could have just split off of that. But, no, I'll do it this way. So there's the main quartz supply for my uh, alumina. And then that gets attached right here. And then we need the aluminum scrap, which is coming out here. This can be demolished. What's up, Teyus? How goes it? Welcome, welcome to the most satisfactory of all gameplays. That's gonna go there. Put, let's see, let's get this going. fast with all these tricks. If you don't know about these tricks... Oh, uh, we need a merger, not a splitter. Uh, we've gotten fast if we're doing the right thing. Uh, if you don't know what the tricks are, watch my blueprint videos. I go over them in detail. They're pretty nifty. Get everything lined up. But there we go. There's our aluminum scrap lined up with that. And I will... Go ahead and make a support. It still feels like that's in a different... Would that look the same if I actually connect it? I guess that's the same as what it looked like before. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. All right, um, now we need floor power. Connected to something. that power pole to over here and then to that power pole then we got to select our aluminum ingot not aluminium paste semester's getting packed yeah that is what semesters tend to do isn't it and am i gonna need we're definitely gonna need another set of foundries here i could so if i shard this right now i'm getting 270 so if I shard it to double, that'll be 540. I mean, it's close to what I want, but let's just, I have the room here. Let's just pop more foundries on the end. Like that. And then all we got to do is connect up the power. Connect the 
belt to another belt. Connect you to a belt. And connect you to you. Alright, so there is aluminum ingots. They're delicious. Mmm, yummy, yummy, yummy. So... Now we just have to do something with the aluminum ingots. I'm surprised how small this has ended up being. I thought we would need a lot more space. The refinery stuff actually goes pretty, pretty hard in terms of rates. Especially when we're summer slooping this. I still think that's the right choice. 80 scrap. The only problem is the rate. I mean, we're about to have a Mark V belt, so I'm just going to hope it's enough aluminum, but I might need two of these refineries just because we can't get the scrap out of the, the refinery fast enough. Because um, we've already looked at, like, this one can do a thousand, and that's only with one power shard, which is crazy. So, anyway, I'll just leave it at 100% clock speed for now. Nice and easy. Yeah, so what do I do with aluminum ingots? I think it's constructors. Or... What's the other thing I need? I need copper ingots over here now. Um... And I believe I took them off of the... They're not on the bus anymore. Because I thought we wouldn't need them anymore. I thought we would only need copper sheets. Ah, <sighs> crap. Mm. How am I going to handle this? So... Currently, the bottom two are open, so it wouldn't be crazy to move copper ingots onto the second level here. Let's just do that. Um, so yeah, we'll just merger. That, and there we go. And I will deconstruct the belt prior to it, so we don't ever get something else mixed in here on accident. And we'll hook that back up. And that should bring copper ingots. Yep, there they are. Perfect. Okay. And I'll probably bring them here. Oh, I didn't line that up. That's annoying. Why did I do it that way? Whoops. In this case, I don't normally uh, dodge using the conveyor lifts, but that just connects perfectly. Um, not needing any lift. So we'll just connect that up. And there we go. What's up, Jacob? How goes it? Alright, so what rates are we looking at here? I think just don't remember what's used in what, so I probably need a lot of both. Uh, I think it's assemblers. Assemblers and constructors. The assemblers are certainly the slower one. The all-clad aluminum sheets are pretty slow. The aluminum casing is pretty fast. Um, so my 8x constructor 
will be fine on that. And then... Assembler, I probably want 6x assemblers. So maybe I do that first. Uh, blueprints, assembler. So something like this. And we've got the ingots over here that we'll bring over. Those, and then the outputs will go on top of that one. So that's perfect. And then the question is, do I want to do that or do I want to do it in line? I think I want to do it in line. Um, and then the spacing, I can't remember. Do we need to move them one closer? I think I do. Yeah. And then they're very close together. So we remove these belts and I will recreate them. Just from jumping in and out of the stream, the 3D aspect seems to add more complexity than Factorio. Does it add or detract from the enjoyment? That is a... A little bit of a loaded, not loaded question, but leading question. Um, it does seem to add to the complexity, but I would I would say a better word is maybe tedium. Like it is more complex to do the actual building of things, but it's more just like it's a lot of work to connect all the belts and it's trickier than in 2D, but the blueprints help a lot and it's more fun. Like, it's more satisfying to build things in Satisfactory, you know, that they do live up to their name. Um, and the 3D aspect, I actually think, helps the enjoyment of the building process. In Factorio, building is more just something you do. Whereas in... I don't want it on that layer. I want it on this one. Uh, whereas in Satisfactory, building is like a fun part of the game, if that makes sense. Whereas in Factorio, it almost feels more like the thing that you have to do because you want to do the automating stuff. Um, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but all that to say, I don't think it necessarily adds or detracts, it just turns it into a different game. So some people don't really like... Um, wow, there's a lot of similar recipes these days. Some people don't really like it. Some people don't like Satisfactory at all because of, you know the whole 3D thing and it can kind of be a pain to build stuff and all that. And that's like acceptable. You don't have to like that. You know, it is different and some people aren't into it. I, I like it, but again, it just feels so different. It's hard to compare the two. Um, Factorio certainly has more complexities in like circuit logistics and I would say base logistics have a bit more complexity to them, but the blueprints are simpler and building stuff is simpler. So there's kind of a, a give and take there. Like I really like how building things can feel more challenging and beautiful in Satisfactory. Like look at this, this just looks so cool. I don't feel like you get anything that looks this cool in Factorio. You know, like the 3D element really adds a lot and it's not just 3D, it's also the graphics, right? You could have a 3D factory building game that the graphics still don't look anything like this. I mean, modded Minecraft is kind of like that. Like, it looks cool, but it doesn't look like this. So the graphics in this game are certainly part of the draw. And some people just don't care about that, which again is totally fine. But, you know, there are people who love Factorio and can't get into Satisfactory and vice versa. There are people who only put thousands and thousands of hours into Satisfactory and they just can't get into Factorio. And those are both completely valid points of view. I think uh, that's... Uh, is that problematic? You know what? Maybe. Maybe it's problematic. Um, yeah, those are just valid points of view. I think people often try to... And I'm not saying you're doing this centered, but I think people try to fight them against each other. Like, oh, which one's better? And I just think that's a really silly question to ask because they're just different games. Oh, 
that's literally not what I meant to do. What I meant to do was this, and then it shouldn't flip as much. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we've got all clad aluminum sheets. Yay! Even though there's less signals and stuff you can do with trains, you like the satisfactory trains more? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I think the satisfactory trains look cooler and feel cooler because again, they're like actual monorails in 3D that you can travel on and stuff. But I certainly don't like, uh, like setting, I don't know. I definitely like Factorio trains more in that sense. These are cooler to look at and more fun to ride though. I'll give, I'll definitely say that. Uh, and finally, I need an Assemblers X... No, Constructors X8, there we go. That's what we're looking for. And we're gonna hook that up somewhere around here because we're just gonna send the aluminum ingots in. So that's all that is. Line that up. I like to leave about a foundation of space between builds. <laughs> yeah, centered. It's a good question. I think a lot of people wonder that. And, you know, it could even be worth me making a video on it, to be honest. Of, uh... Should you play Satisfactory if you like Factorio? You know, or... or I don't know what the title exactly would be, but something like that. Because I think a lot of people are wondering that, and... I probably, if I were to, like, write out a script, could put my thoughts together a bit better than I just did now. Okay, so did I hook up the right thing? I think I did. Yes, that is aluminum ingots. Now, aluminum ingots are seeming a bit slow. This should be pumping out scrap constantly. What's going on here? Uh-oh. Okay, our system broke. So everything I said earlier, you can forget it. Um... Hmm... So... It's possible I need a second one. It's possible it needs to be higher. Maybe I make it one tile higher. Maybe that was, maybe that was the play. Rather than just going up like one meter higher to the foundation, maybe two meters higher is the play here. Definitely have to keep an eye on it still. This still, this still could easily break. But let's try it this way. And then that means there's less option for the sloshing to work its way up here. That might be part of it. Like if I were to turn this one off, and then I were to flush this, Now we probably won't see much come in here. It's like a tiny bit. So that might help. Yeah, that might fix it. I also might need the industrial fluid buffer just to hold more units. I'm not sure. Be honest, I'm not sure what the answer is here. I thought this would work. I thought this pressure would push against this one in such a way that it wouldn't. It's also possible that I have the ordering wrong here. I might need to connect them right here. I could be it, actually. I might need to have the junction before the first consumption building. Let's switch that. Um, that could certainly be a part of the problem. Of course, that looks bad, so we need to fix that. Proposed title is Satisfactory, a 3D Factorio. Yeah, that's a, a good way to phrase it.
So this way, if this one's higher, it should... I don't know. We're gonna see what happens, I guess, over time. But that, that scrap belt should be 100% full. And then... We're gonna go ahead and add a stackable pole here. Go above and beyond to infinity. All right, there we go. There's aluminum casings. those to look the same. That requires me to do this. I really am excited for that hover pack because then I can just build, build from the sky. Alright, that looks fine. We're gonna need to power this up. Um... Okay. And then our constructors are making aluminum casings. Make sure they all fire up. From that weird bug that we had before where three of the four back here were not receiving their inputs for whatever reason. I, at least I think it was a bug, I guess. I don't know for sure. Alright. We did it. We did it, we did it. And what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to do a splitter, a smart splitter. And I'm going to overflow to the right... And I'm gonna put an awesome sink. This is because I need to monitor that water situation. And if I'm not sinking the scrap, we might have issues. Then again, it could there could be a world where we only have issues when it stops and then starts again. So we're just gonna have to we're gonna have to keep a close eye on this. For now it seems fine. Um now it seems like it's running fine. But yeah, that's powered up now. And yeah, so I could... I'm not going to bring them all the way over there. That's not very efficient whatsoever. So I could put the storage containers in depots. Heck, I could put them right here. Um... Really see why not. Just make sure that doesn't clip with this belt here. No, oh, that that does work out. That's nice and efficient use of space. All right, so then. need a splitter different spots oh no facing that way. No, that doesn't work either. That's annoying. Surely there's a way to make this work. Come on now. Be nice. 
you know what I might need to do is put the end of the belt here. Ah. Oh, I was hoping that would link up. Happy, happy go lucky snapping there. Uh, what if I try to turn a corner here? Oh my gosh, you'd think there would be an easy way to do this. All right, we need a new solution. Um, the new solution is this one. We split the bottom one. And somehow that's going to fix all my problems. Yes? Maybe? <gasps> no, no, it really didn't. truly don't know the right way to do this. Uh, let's move these. And get that there. And then maybe what we do... Okay, here's the idea. We just build a stack of splitters here. And then this belt goes into the splitter. Really hard to aim at the right part. Um, I think that's going into the splitter. And then that one goes into that splitter. And then the front. Oh, but see, the problem is it's now intersecting with that other belt. Ah! Hmm. Maybe I need to go a tile higher. are hooked up and then finally going over to the bus it'll be like this and this all right well that was kind of a pain in the butt hey simply kyle welcome welcome glad you've been enjoying the blueprints 
and now I switched what's in there. So that one is the casing. And this one is the all clads. And, oh, I didn't hook up the depot on the back. Crap. Now that doesn't leave room for my silica. Shoot. Why did I not think about that part? You visited Mexico City for one week and you're still getting about 20% of your ads in Spanish. I once in a while get my ads in Spanish, and I do not understand why. Like, I don't, I don't give the, I don't give the algorithm any reasons to believe it should serve me Spanish ads, but it still happens. So I don't know. These things are un incomprehensible. I think. Okay, so this is going to be a bit hairy. I think. Let's try. Let's try starting with bringing it to there. Ah, that doesn't work. Hmm. Could try. That's certainly gonna run into something. I kinda need to come out at an angle here. And just hope it kinda works out. So let's see if that will work. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Alright. This is why I like to leave more room between things, so that I don't have to end up doing this kind of nonsense. Oh, goodness. Um, and then, for here, now I have to figure out this nonsense. So I need a merger onto the end of that belt. And... Wait, where's... Isn't this quartz, and this is also quartz? I don't think so. No, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's the quartz belt, okay. Uh, so why is none... So uh, we're broken again? Is it the water? Uh, maybe. This is not running because it's out of Illumina Solution. We're out of Illumina Solution because... We're out of water. Now that doesn't make sense. We're out of water for reasons I can't comprehend. Um, I must have broken something. Because the water's here. And then... Does that start it back up? That has water in it. That has no water in it. It's like this is not actually connected. That's got to be a bug of some fashion, some form or fashion. Pretty sure whatever we just encountered, it was a bug. Um. So yeah, I need to line that up. Maybe junctions can't be this close together? I don't know. Um, we'll have to see if this continues to bug out or if it works the way it's supposed to. Where 
do I go? Alright. Are you filling up at all? It's not. But I think that's okay. I think that's because these aren't filled. Yeah. These will fill up in a little bit, I think, because the zero water pressure should fill those up coming from this direction. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens here. It sh ah, it should work, but I'm not convinced it will. And I don't think this is working the way I want it to. if this short little segment is messing with things. I don't know. Maybe it's working. We just need a world where our final refinery here always has, you know, the water being able to flow out. That's, that's the important part. Nothing else really matters. As long as that flows out, then we're good. Sweet. Okay, well, we officially have aluminum, all clad, aluminum sheets, and aluminum casings. And I can now research things that require those. And we can make new parts that require those, AKA Mark V belts. So let's get Mark V belts going here. And we're gonna then work on our turbo fuel factory. Cause I wanna see how fast we can fly. All right, so we're done with tier six, tier seven. Ooh, the hover pack, we can get that soon as well. But first, this. I need 400 EIBs. Which I only have 300. Uh, and what is it? Reinforced plates? I have to go grab a few more of those. Where do I keep the reinforced plates? Is it on this first floor? I think it is. Man, I haven't touched these in a long time. Oh, I don't actually have a buffer for the. Oh my god, look at how slow this belt is. It feels like it's molasses. Watching a Mark 1 belt. Yeah, I don't even have these buffered. That's bad. Alright. Um, so I really should... Put a storage container in between. When I set this up, I literally didn't even know this strategy yet. Of setting up a storage container between your build and the dimensional depot. Cracks me up. Come on. Come on. You know, I don't even need this. This was all... This belt is literally doing nothing. Alright, hold on. Let's just redo this. Uh, maybe a better comparison is to Dyson Sphere Program. Um, I have not played... Yeah, I'm not really qualified to speak to that. I have played through Dyson Sphere Program once, and I didn't even really beat it when I played. So, I, it's certainly not... Certainly not one that I really can speak to that much. I Like, I've played enough to know how it all works, and I actually... Is it closer to Dyson Sphere Program... Or Factorio, talking about Satisfactory. Um, it's kind of about the same. I don't know if the 3D-ness of Dyson Sphere Program brings it closer in line with Satisfactory. I'd say Dyson Sphere Program and Factorio are way more similar than Satisfactory is to either. So if you were like, if you were doing a Venn diagram, the overlap area between DSP and Factorio is much larger. And Satisfactory's kind of off in the distance a little bit. That much I am sure of. Alright, I think we have enough. Or close to it. 
Then I need more beams. There we go. Junk. <gasps> Yay! Milestone reached. Fix it dedicated this milestone to the conveyor belt and lift mark 5. They may be implying that your factory could be further optimized. While they are correct, I believe they are setting unreasonable expectations. Having all of humanity very definitely relying on your work is a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm here. It is a good thing you're here, Ada. Thanks for being here always. Alright, let's see how fast these launchers can launch me. So we'll, we'll compare the two. And I won't break out the, the packaged liquid biofuel, but that would launch me even further, of course. If I were to... I mean, not further, but basically you can hover longer, and so you end up going further on the same launch. If that's something you want to do. Uh, wanted to compare. But yeah, so the speed of Mark IV, this is what we've been working with, is pretty fast. You know, you can get across this valley pretty quick. Ain't no... ain't no thing. What's this? This is a Mark II belt that barely adds any speed. Because, like, the Blade Runners are all already pretty fast, and so the, the difference that you feel when you're on a Mark I belt or a Mark II belt, you almost don't even feel it. Mark III is, like, a little bit of a boost, but Mark IV is when you really start to feel like, oh, I'm actually going fast. And now... Now we get Mark V. No. Oh my gosh, it's so fast. Oh yeah, look at how far we can go. Beautiful. Beautiful Mark V belt launchers. I wish I could just upgrade entire areas of my base with Mark V belts. Because I don't really... Like, they're not very expensive. Right, I'm going to be getting these all-clad sheets very quickly. And basically, I just want everything to be a Mark V belt now. What's the speed, by the way? I haven't even looked. I forget. 780. Okay, it's another three. So it's not... It's not double. That would be 960. Um, it's adding 300. So it's about... It is 300 compared to 480. That's... Five-eighths more? What, what weird ratios. I don't understand why it's five-eighths more when it could just be 50% more. That would be worse, but, like, at least the numbers would make more sense. Um, <laughs> alright, let's see if things are still running over here. I see some red lights, which is bad. Why are there red lights here? Oh, I just haven't selected the recipe for all of these. So that's a reason those aren't running. Help a bit. Okay. It looks like our aluminum's running pretty well. We've got 180 ingots going to sheets first, and then the rest goes to the aluminum casing. Okay, but it looks like we haven't backed up yet. Probably because of that error we just had with the foundries. Now that we've got six foundries rolling, we are consuming six times 90s, 540. We should be consuming all of the aluminum scrap. But that's with the old 480 belts. Now I can upgrade. Upgrade. And upgrade. We can get this aluminum scrap going quite a bit faster here. I can follow its path and magical journey that it is going on here. There we go. Did we stop again? Crap. We still haven't done this right. Interesting. 
So somehow... Somehow, the low pressure water is still getting in. Like, I wonder maybe this needs to be on this end. Could be the fix. So that the backflow pressure is higher. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure how all this works. Um, the other way to do it is to get exact ratios, right? This is 240 out. So I could overclock one of these to use 240. Um, and then that would always consume the amount that that's producing. But I want to figure out this priority thing. It, it really is supposed to work. It's just a matter of how you hook it up. So yeah, I guess the next thing to try is putting the connection on the end over here. Maybe like right there. do it that way so we have more of the higher up so yeah I, I'm not sure if this will fix it or not maybe that'll make it less likely for sloshing from the the low pressure end to make it in I don't know we'll just have to pay attention Shouldn't this be a full belt? What's going on here? Uh, did I not upgrade the lift? What's going on? Why are we going slower? Oh, there's a tiny, there's a tiny little belt segment right there. Is that it? Are we flowing full speed now? I can't tell. No, those are like having micro stops. It's Mark 5. The lift is Mark 5. That belt up there is Mark 5. That's flowing smoothly. There's some sort of mark for nonsense happening here. I don't know what it was. But let's just fix it. We work for fix it, so we fix it. for us? No? Okay. Trick. Line up nicely. Lead you. Rebuild you. What? Oh, that needs to be a merger. I literally did that before. Alright, there we go. Now it's a merger. Still feels wrong. They are the same speed. Is it from there left? Five. I guess those look like they're fully compressed. But 
then why does it not look fully compressed on this side? Those look more spaced out. I guess the easiest way is to just look at the, what's the clock rate again? 780? Oh yeah, it's not, it's not getting rid of all of it. Um, there are no priority mergers, unfortunately, in Satisfactory. So I am correct that something's getting weirdly stuck here. I don't even know what it could be. Because I just rebuilt this as Mark V's. It is sad there's no way to priority merge. It truly is. That lift is Mark V. This belt is Mark V. This is Mark V. But something is going going awry here, and I can't tell what it is. All right, let's start with awesome sink. You just go straight in. Does that does that work? Uh, we need power up. Power. Yeah, that's the rate we should be going. That's what I was expecting to see. Look at that. We're flying. We not getting that right. It's like already slow. It's like literally the lift isn't going at the right speed. Is it just the lift? The conveyor lifts Mark Five not work. Like what is going on here? No, that works. Is there a problem with the merger? I mean, mergers don't have a limit either. Unless there's something I'm really not aware of. Um. What if I were to just like Connect this here, that there. No, it's going slow again. Immediately slowed down by something over here. Oh, it's a smart splitter? Does that... Are smart splitters limited? Is that it? That could be it. Snart. Smart splitter. Uh, it doesn't say it's limited. I don't think it is. <sighs> I am confused on what's going on here. If I remove the smart solder, what's going on? Oh, there was a weird invisible belt segment thing. Okay. Well, that's why you have longer belt segments, people. We weren't doing anything wrong. We just literally... It was probably between this and the smart splitter. That's why I like to avoid those short stubby belt segments. It's for stupid stuff like that. Okay, well, we figured out the problem. Now we're rip roaring. There we go. There we go. All right. And so we want 780, so 390 here. 
and now the scrap should basically stay at zero. Snart splitters. <laughs> All right, um, let's ditch that scrap and let's check on our water here. Is this filling up again? It's to 150. Um, let's see if it keeps filling up past that. I'm worried it will. But yeah, I'm really uncertain how exactly the mechanics work here, like... Because we, we had it connected in the middle and it broke. We had it connected near the, the entrance to the whole thing, and that broke it. Which I wouldn't have thought would. I would have thought the higher pressure would have taken precedence. Um... Yeah, priority inputs with fluids are really tricky. Priority outputs are super easy. But not priority inputs. I guess we could additionally install a valve on this. If we want. Um, to make sure the, the water doesn't flow too fast in this direction. And then we've got two systems working together, but that we shouldn't need two systems. See, I'm concerned. Why is the water taking so long to empty? Uh, dang it. Um, okay, how do we do this? the problem to be honest I mean I don't see why 300 would have been a problem because it was only outputting 260 but maybe the pressure uh, maybe like if it's at half pressure or what am I saying maybe if it's at like full pressure on the 300 that only translates to half pressure on the 600s so that maybe that was what was going wrong with all of this we'll keep an eye on this running right now. I'll take it. And we've got lots of aluminum coming back. It looks like the, the all-clad sheets are already stockpiled. And the casings are a lot slower. Why are I'm actually getting quite a few casings. Maybe we're fine. Yeah, I guess it's just the priority was to the all-clad sheets first, so... They're not split very well. All right, sweet. So now we will end this an another hour and 40 minute episode. It's ridiculous. Uh, we'll go ahead and end it by heading over and adding a few more turbo fuel power generators. So we're gonna use our packaged liquid biofuel. Head over to the east here. We can see our train going by. Oh, we can. There it is. There it is. Going to get bauxite. I probably went too far north. We made it, like... Good portion of the way there on one jump. That was crazy.
Alright. Let's build another launcher here randomly. Whee! And here we are. 20 gigawatt turbo fuel power plant. Now we just need the other 60% of the power plants. I presume it's all still running. I don't actually know. Make it sound like it's still running. Uh, yes, I am anti-hypertube launcher. Uh, not in the sense that I judge anyone for it, but it feels cheesy to me. Uh, I mean, it it quite literally is cheese. Like, it's, it's obviously not... Like, what's the right word? I, not intended might be a bit strong, because... Because certainly, Coffee Stain is well aware of it, and they haven't changed it, so they like that players can do it. So, it's intended in that sense. But it's not intended in the obvious sense that, like, you have to do some pretty janky stuff to get it working, and fix it has not intended it. You know, like, it doesn't make any sense in lore that things would work that way. So it's very much gaming the system um, in a way that I personally don't like, but I do think they're cool when I see them in people's videos and stuff. Um, but yeah, like, the... The super hyper tube launcher thing is just like kind of janky. So I prefer not to use it. I use belt launchers to get around long distances. That works fine for most things. Especially, I, I haven't gotten to try them yet, but the Mark VI belts, those are gonna be dope. All right, so we've got our blueprint for four fuel generators. And we just plop that like this. Get all the resources drain out of our inventory. I think I'll be able to build about three of them. And then we'll have to wait a bit. Yeah, if I ever... Uh, another part of the reason I haven't been using hypertubes is I haven't needed to. If I ever, like, colonize the whole map kind of thing, I may build a hypertube launcher to go from one end of the map to the other, you know, like... I'm not that opposed to them that I wouldn't even consider it. So, you never know. Alright, junction, we can't those up. That's good to go. There's the turbo foil. And yeah, these should turn green as the fuel fills. Like we're still working. Gosh, this is just a sea of generators. I love it. I love it. All right, we need another. Wait, is this? Did I count wrong? No, these are sets of 16. Right, I need five sets of 16 to make 80 total, and that will give me the amount we want. What is it doing? Alright. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't connect the, the fluid in between the builds. Which is just a tiny little gap. Uh, it's hard to see. It's this one. Gap, gaps in between these two. And there's one more gap in between these two. There we go. Okay, so then we should see the lights turn green over there. I guess it's just doing the manifold thing. Yeah, 
just have to fill out first. We should be okay once it's, once it's all mirror folded. I think. Flow rate here seems to be the right number. Possible I need a pump somewhere, I'm not sure. But. Oh yeah, rocket fuel, I'm excited about getting to that. Um, we are not that far, I don't think, but we're still not there. All right, so I need five sets. I have three sets now, so we're 60% of the way done with our power plant. I'm gonna build whatever I can with the resources we have and then we'll duck out. Need one more minute. Yeah, whatever. I'll head out. I'll hook that up later, but we still need one, two, three, and then four more. I need seven more sets, 28 more generators. That's pretty crazy. Alright, and then we'll get a launcher. I feel like I should just have a launcher set up somewhere here. Up as high as we can. Yum. Problem is, we gotta get that altitude back. I think we can make it up to our sulfur. For mining area here. Woo! Just barely. Oh my! My feet just kissed the ground. Alright, and then we can upgrade these belts and use these as launchers. That should get us all the way home. Not overclocking them? Uh, not really. Once I can make power shards, then I will. But overclocking, I would have needed to have overclocked like, what, 30 generators? I would have needed basically 80 shards, roughly. I didn't really want to spend 80 power shards. Space is free, the resources are free, or at least sort of free. All right, let's go back to the, the hub. And yeah, I think we'll call that the end of the YouTube episode. We got aluminum, and we should be able to get some exciting hover packs here. And then drones. We'll be able to get rocket fuel once we have these radio control units going, which shouldn't be too bad. And we're working our way towards turbo motors, Mark III miners, and nuclear power. So... Yeah, we'll call that the end of the episode. So for those of you from future YouTube, as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you're here live, stick around. I'm going to keep streaming. But that'll be it for the recorded episode. See you guys later.